Today we're going to go through shielding effective nuclear charge and principal quantum numbers, and we're going to set up our explanations for why the periodic trends are what they are. So first of all, we need to start with this. As you move across a period on the periodic table, or as you move down a group on the periodic table, if you're moving in this general direction, the number of protons in each atom is going to increase as we move in that direction. So as the number of protons goes up, moving from say lithium to fluorine or from lithium to potassium, then we're going to see more inward pull from all of those protons. Now, the number of protons going up means you have more stuff, but it does not actually directly affect the size of the atom because the nucleus is very small. So if we were to double or triple the size of the nucleus, that does not directly correlate with how much bigger the atom is because the, the, the bulk of the space in the atom is occupied by electrons. But the number of protons is going to affect how the electrons move about that atom and how far apart they are from one another. So that's one of our things we need to consider. Protons pull electrons inward, electrons repel other electrons. While this point is very simple, this one becomes very complicated as we start to move through it. So electrons repelling other electrons is given a name, it's given the name shielding. Or really we could call it electron repulsions. Now what's interesting about electron-electron repulsions is that within an energy level, the electrons within an energy level do not repel each other very much. So here we're going to draw a neon Bohr model atom. We have 10 protons in the center, two electrons in the 1f state, and then eight electrons in the 2s and the 2p states. So all of those electrons repel each other. However, the ones that are in the outer circle repel each other very little. And the reason for that is because the electrons tend to push each other to the left and to the right. This is not a static thing in real life. The drawing is static and it makes it look like these two electrons are really close. But really, these are going to be in constant motion. And so what's going to happen over time is these electrons are going to push each other to the right and to the left and very little outward. And so when we average that over time, we get very little repulsion net between those two electrons. Well, what that means is that within an energy level, we can ignore the electron-electron repulsions or that it's going to be very, very small, depending on what perspective we wish. So often in an AP chemistry class or an IB chemistry class, we will often ignore any of the contribution because it's so small. So within an energy level, there's very little shielding. between electrons. So we have protons here in the center pulling electrons in. We have electrons here in the core pushing electrons out. So what we do is we combine the two into a single term. And that term is effective nuclear charge, which is written as Z effective. So the effective nuclear charge is equal to the number of protons minus the number of shielding electrons. Now the effective nuclear charge is, is designated towards a single electron. So we could describe the effective nuclear charge of this electron or this electron or some other electron. But once we choose an electron, what we then do is we count up how many protons there are, and then we count up all the electrons that are in lower energy levels. We plug those two numbers in. So in this case, our effective nuclear charge of this electron here would be equal to 10 protons minus two shielding electrons for a total of plus eight. So effective nuclear charge combines the attraction and repulsion on that electron into a single term. And that's very useful for us to go ahead and describe what's going on within periodic trends. Because often, the number of electrons shielding will increase, as will the number of protons attracting. And if they do so in a way where they both go up by a similar amount, we can often ignore most of that because there tends to be a net effect of almost nothing. The last term is N, and this is your energy level. So N tells you what energy level the, the electrons are occupying, and as a general trend, the higher the energy level, the 
further the electron is from the nucleus. Now it turns out that an N equals 1 for a lithium atom is different than an N equals 1 for a sodium atom. However, within a sodium atom, N equals 1 is closer than N equals 2, is closer than N equals 3. And so a lot of our trends, when we see this effective nuclear charge being constant on a group, we look for energy level to explain things, because as we move further and further from the nucleus, there is a weaker and weaker interaction between the nucleus and those electrons. So as the distance between the nucleus and the electrons increases, the force of attraction will decrease. Very similar to if you had two magnets, as you move them further apart, the force of attraction between them weakens. If you bring them closer together, the force of attraction becomes larger. So these three factors can be combined to describe and explain all the periodic trends that you're going to learn about. You're going to learn about atomic radius, you're going to learn about ionization energy, you're going to learn about electronegativity, and in particular electronegativity is one that you really want to have a very strong fundamental understanding of why some atoms can pull on electrons more than others. When we look at things like effective nuclear charge and energy level, what about this atom makes it good at pulling on an electron from something else? Because that idea is going to translate into all of chemistry. Why is this more reactive than organic chemistry? Well, because the carbon or the oxygen or whatever atom has this ability to pull on electrons and cause a distribution of positive or negative charge nearby. And that's kind of the fundamental idea that shapes reactivity in chemistry is the ability to form positive and negative charges and the fact that they will attract one another.